it's snowing outside, by the way. It's November, and it's snowing. Hi again, I'm Ryan, your host for The Toast, even though I haven't done a Toast video for quite a while now, because I've been busy, I've been moving, I've been I'm setting up all my nerdy shit in my new office. Now, I wasn't really ready to do another video, but when an event like this comes along, I just gotta talk about it. Yes, I'm talking about the man of the hour, the person who has sparks shooting from his hands, the best red cloak in the business. That's right, of course, I'm talking about Doctor Strange, Volume 2, featuring... Thor. What do you expect? I got that another movie came along with my favorite character. Of course I'm going to talk about it. I'm the number one strange stalker. Stalker? Do I really want to go with stalker? Is there another S word that I can use? Strange... Strangler? Sorcerer stalker. Sorcerer stalker. Sorcerer stalker is not only hard to say, but it's less general creepy than strange stalker, I guess. You know what? Just ignore that. We're going to talk about Thor. Alright, so Thor Ragnarok is now out in theaters. I had the opportunity to see it a couple of days ago, and it's great. It's really fun. Fun is going to be the word that everyone's going to use to describe it, because that's, that's what it is. Unfortunately, it's nothing more than that, because Marvel has, has perfected this formula of just fun, funny movies, taking a silly premise like a comic book, making it a good, fun, roaring time, and filling it with jokes. Too many... Now, I can understand why all the Marvel movies are following this formula now, because it makes money, it makes bank. Problem is, when you're hoping for more of a fulfilling movie with a story of the characters that you are interested in, seeing them just perform in a comedy is a little bit disappointing. Especially whenever you try and give any scene some gravitas, when you, when you try and make a serious moment and then ruin it with a joke every single time. It just gets too much, and Thor does that constantly. It's not enough to wreck the movie by any means. I really enjoyed it. Taiko Waititi did a great job. I apologize if I'm not mispronouncing that name, but it is something to keep in mind. Harkening back to Doctor Strange, when there was a big serious moment when he's looking at himself in the mirror, then the cape comes in and does something funny. Wish that didn't happen. It happens constantly in Thor, and I wish it didn't. But anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about the rest of the film. I don't know why I bother with this anymore. I mean, it's, it's gone now. Destroyed. I am worthy. So Thor starts out this movie hanging in something Heim, it's bound to be called. Um, I don't know, I'm not Thor expert. Talking with Surtur, who's going to bring about Ragnarok, the end of Asgard. Quickly vanquishes him in a pretty awesome fight scene, actually. Heads back to Asgard, confronts Loki, reveals him. In a, in a pretty weird kind of way, too. I mean, obviously it's Loki and he hadn't figured that out sooner and anyway it doesn't matter they just wanted to pair him up right away with Thor and get this movie rolling. They head to Earth to find Odin. Odin's not there. Anthony Hopkins maybe gets two lines in the movie which is always a shame. Doctor Strange intervenes for the best part of the film. Totally swaggering around like a boss in the sanctum. I love how everything strange is happening now. There was more strangeness in this one scene than there was in the entire first film. Not hitting on the first film. Scott Derrickson did a great job. I'm just saying like I, I love seeing Strange in his element being strange, and Thor just completely bewildered. And even when Loki confronts him about, you think you're a sorcerer, Strange just brushes him aside. <laughs> it's just like, dude, don't mess with Strange. Anyway, I won't gush too much, I already did, but I'm not gonna gush anymore. Move along. So Odin dies, hell is free. Kate Blanchett does a fantastic job. Holy crap, what? I have a, must have a thing for villainous ladies. Whew. Thor and Loki get strewn aside, wind up on Sakaar. Jeff Goldblum hits the scene. Again, another just brilliant addition to the movie. I swear, a lot, like all of his scenes, they're not so much ad-libbed as they, they just run on, and they always use the take where he just does something awkward or just finishes a sentence too early and, and starts another one, and everyone's probably thinking like, oh, you can't remember his lines, but then it's so funny that they just keep it in the movie. I don't know if it's intentional, if it is, holy crap. Mm, it, comedy finds a way. I, no, no, don't do an impression, right? So Thor gets put into a gladiatorial arena, fighting the Hulk. You know this, you've seen the trailers, you've seen the movie by now. The two have a good old smash up, quickly become friends, stage a revolution, get off the planet, get back to Asgard, fight Hela, they lose. Am I just describing the movie now? I'm not talking about anything relevant, am I? I am so out of practice. Point is, everyone does a great job in this movie. I mean, Loki himself, I, I always feel like, oh, we're gonna get tired of Loki because he, he keeps popping up and everyone likes him, they use him too much because he's like a fan favorite. But in this one, no, he's true to form. Every moment of this film, I'm wondering, okay, 
uh, are, are you playing? Are you double crossing? You're always double crossing, but are you? I can't quite tell if you are. Do you actually have a heart? Are you being a good guy? No, he double crossed again. No, but then now he's doing a certain amount of thing. Oh, no, he double crossed again. Oh, but he's back on the side of the winning team. He just keeps going round and round, and I like that. The character's the god of mischief. He's he's just messing with your head all the time. I mean, the guy died in Thor's arms and he tricked him, and th th there should be a lot more emotional depth in this whole scenario. But again, the movie is a purely a comedy. It, it, it just doesn't touch on that stuff. Or if it does, it brushes it aside so lightheartedly. Sacrifice a real human drama for, well, Asgardian drama, for comedy? Yeah, it pays off. It's pretty equal in return, if you ask me. But coming straight off the back of Guardians 2, it's like uh, a bit too much comedy. But honestly, if you haven't seen Thor, just go see Thor. It's, it's a fun time, no matter what. I'm certainly gonna see it again. I'm certainly gonna drag people to this movie because I know they're gonna have a good time. And then despite my gripes, I have to give Thor Ragnarok a toast. I don't have my mug here. I packed my mug. Cheers. This video is probably a complete waste of your time. Uh, probably a complete waste of my time too. But I just had to gush because Doctor Strange is in it. And we all know that I am a fanatic. Strange. Seeker, strange seeker, S sorcerer succubus, sorcerer savant? No, I need I need a word. I need a word for for being a Doctor Strange fan, being a really big Doctor Strange fan. Isn't it enough that I built the suit? Look at that cape. Look at it. It's like you know how much work went into that. Oh, you have no idea. That those shelves are gonna be full of Doctor Strange. I got the freaking hot toy. This is my kid's college fund right there. I'll I'll do an unboxing video for this. Yeah. You like, you like unboxing videos, don't you, Internet? Putting it back in his bag to keep fresh. Oh yeah, this is a, this is another thing that bugs me. Uh, why do they call him the God of Thunder and he shoots lightning? I mean, it's okay when they call it a thunderbolt, but technically, shouldn't he just be the God of Loud Noises? I mean, lightning causes thunder. Philosophers will be debating this for years to come. Oh, and they've edited the trailer so much to just keep a secret that Thor loses an eye or Hella does the whole <laughs> thing on the fjords instead of a, an alley? I haven't been recording. Yes, I have been recording. Okay. I'm, I'm out of practice. The hook is worthy. Okay, let's talk Korg. Korg is voiced by the director, Tiago Waititi. Again, apologies if I mispronounce that name. He directed uh, What We Do in the Shadows. Highly recommend watching that. It's on Netflix. But Korg, I love that you take a character from the comics who's this big, brooding, wise, but stern stone man, a gladiator, you, know, you always picture he's gonna have, oh, I'm Korg, I will give Hulk good advice. Um, and you expect him to sound like that, and then he's like, all right, buff, um, I'm not good at accents. Yeah, we stole a spaceship, you wanna come? And I love that, I loved it, it just completely catches you off guard, and it made him incredibly watchable. And that Valkyrie too, Valkyrie was a badass, but not, not in the sense that she was forced into being a badass, kind of Wonder Woman-esque, where you're just following her kicking ass and she's invulnerable to anything. No, she was an alcoholic who saw all of her fellow Valkyries murdered by Hela, and then said, nope, nope, I'm out, I'm going off the scar. I am knocking everything over because everything is half out of a box and who knew making a video will cause this much mess? But anyway, Valkyrie, quite a fun character. I, I like the interplay that they had with, well, everyone really. I mean, the buddy story of Hulk and Thor. I mean, Hulk alone being so childish is so perfect. He's grown from the beast that only says smash to like, you know, toddler level intelligence. Um, maybe, maybe more, I don't know. I try to look smart these days. The kids seem to be getting really smart. And everyone was thinking it when, when Banner jumped out of the uh, spaceship. I mean, I'm, at least me, because I've got a cynical mind. I was hoping he would just go splat on the on the bridge. Then he did, and it was way funnier than even I could imagine in my head. Just the sound of it, just going, dunk! Sure, they've kind of done that in the previous Hulk movie. Uh, but to be honest, a lot of people who are watching this movie probably didn't see the Incredible Hulk movie. Edward Norton, still pretty damn good Hulk movie. Everything just worked. Every character was fun and interesting. It was a movie com made up of everything right. And you, you really just do have a blast with it. And obviously, yes, that's Thanos uh, at the post credit scene. I mean, uh, Loki stole the Tesseract again and he's probably after it. And well, obviously that's what happens next. I've been rambling on for ages for such a... A, a throwaway video. Okay, I'm gonna go. 
Um, uh, what, what the hell do I say when I sign off? It's been so long. Oh yeah, if you want to watch anything else from me, click, click, click away, and I will catch you next time. I don't have my mug again, and my hammer's on the wall.